So some of my patrons on Patreon wanted to see how to assemble these ejectable and retractable Batman blades because I do have the 3D files posted up there. Now I also do sell these fully assembled on Etsy, but if you wanted to swap out the blades for a different color or you maybe broke a part or a component at Comic Con or something like that and you wanted to go through and do a rebuild or maybe take it apart and clean it, this is also to show you how to do that. If you wanted to see a more holistic overview of the entirety of how this works and some of the features and things that I baked in here and why I designed them in this way. Check out my overview video. It's gonna be more like what you're looking for there. Now we're gonna go through start to finish how to assemble one of these blades. So this is laid out such that I'm going from the bottom to the top of the blade. So I've got the strap mount, lower chassis, middle chassis, and the cover. We're gonna start with the lower chassis actually. So I'm gonna put this aside and I'm actually gonna grab this little box just to hold this up over the edge because the rack will overhang on the edge like this and we basically just don't want this to be sitting up and then we won't be able to assemble it. So if you're doing this on a countertop, just have this hanging off the edge of the counter. So if we grab the rack, you're gonna notice there's three little tick marks and those are gonna align with each of the gears. So you can see we can align those and that's gonna ensure that these are in the right positions and they're all aligned with each other. Now before we go and put the friction reducing bearings, because this is a pretty complex mechanism, there's a lot of moving parts, so we need a lot of friction reducing components. Now you will notice in each of these sockets, I've got a slightly raised platform right in the middle. It can be kind of hard to see with all the print lines and whatnot. That's gonna allow the inner casing of the bearing to sit on that to allow the outer section to have no frictional contact other than the actual rack itself. So drop three of these bearings into those pockets, set the rack there, and we're gonna drop three larger bearings on these posts, and then set each of the gear-based arms on each post and align those tick marks. This way the rack is pinched between those two bearings and it exhibits very low friction. Now we're gonna put the middle chassis cover over this and I recommend to keep parts from slipping around while you're building this to grab two of the longer screws, the main chassis screws, and then just put a couple in here to hold it together tentatively while you're assembling the rest of this. So now we're gonna grab our blades and we're gonna go, doesn't really matter the order, but I like to go from the biggest blade to smallest and do keep track of the size differences here. So the biggest one is gonna be on the right side. Again, we're assembling the right arm blade here. Left arm blade, you just assemble it the same way, but flip the axis. And you're gonna line these up one after the other until you see that this is the larger one. Next, I'm gonna grab a large bearing this is gonna go inside the component. Now, do push these bearings up actually from the bottom. The reason for this is that when doing 3D printing, the bottom layer is almost always ever so slightly, we're talking like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 millimeters wider than the other layers because it's on the bed. So what might happen, and this is why I want you to push the bearing from the bottom, is the bottom layer might be just big enough to stop that bearing. And if you put it through the top and don't get it through the bottom bearing, you'll have frictional problems later on. So again, this is a very precise build and friction really matters when cranking these down. So just take your knife and score that base layer to ensure that you've got a wide enough hole. Grab your bearing, push it on through because it's supposed to be a tight, secure fit. So it's a, it's a challenge between getting a system like this be low friction but not wobbly and loose. So when you put these bearings in, do make sure that it's protruding out the bottom ever so slightly. This is such that when we push the washer in, it's gonna push our bearing up until it's appropriate, and now it's nice and low friction. Grab the upper arm, align the two holes there, and then take your shorter screws, one of the shorter screws, and we're gonna drive it on through. Now this is another piece where, depending on the tolerances of the given printer, um, you might have more or less struggle, but it should be tight enough that you can actually thread the washer. And you have to support the washer because it'll just spin otherwise. So just support it with your fingers, and keep driving this through until this is actually tight. So it will tighten itself up as its own mechanism. So notice, it's actually holding itself together and it's very low friction and it's not going anywhere. Now we're gonna take this and put it on top of the next one, but we do still need one bearing for that post. And now we can drive this on through. So I'm pushing it over the bearing and also making sure that the holes are aligned so that it can go through there. You notice the hexagon for the nut here as well. So that's how we do the first blade. Now we're just gonna do the same for the other two. With all three blades on, with the tensions right, they're not actually going anywhere right now and I can test if there's any friction here. They should be super loose and easy to move. Now this one I notice is a little bit tight, so I'm actually going to do some adjustment on that bearing by tightening and then loosening and tightening until I can get it super smooth and easy to move around. 
Perfect. Now I'm going to set the blade down, and I'm going to remove my temporary bolts here. Now we're going to grab three small bearings and push them onto these little posts on the blades. Now this is something that can add a lot of friction later on, so I would actually recommend dry fitting these bearings on the blades before you assemble it. I already know that these posts are good, but sometimes you can get a little bit of flare at the base of these posts because when 3D printing, the first layer in those little cones can be pretty hot and it can be a little bit spongy. So sometimes you might have to sand or shave a little bit around the base just to make sure that your bearings can sit on these blades properly. So the bottom of this bearing should fit completely flush with the top of this blade. If it's sitting up by even a millimeter, like even by a little shaded layer, when you crank the top cover on, it will actually pinch these and you'll have high friction because it's gonna be scraping these bearings along that cover because they're sitting up too high. So make sure these bearings are totally flush with the top of these blades. Now we're putting the upper cover on. So all we have to do is make sure the rack is all the way forwards and then each of the blades bearings are all the way back so that this can sit on there properly. Do a little bit of rotation until it drops over all three bearings and then push it until we can align all of our holes. And then finally drive all of our large chassis bolts through. So with those six in, you can see them coming out the bottom. Now for the last one, the chassis bolt we're using is a 14 millimeter. So if you compare it to all the other chassis bolts, you'll notice that it's ever so slightly shorter. So pick the one that's long, but not super long. And that's gonna be the one that we put at the very end. So you can see that 14 millimeter just barely pokes out the bottom, just enough to put a nut on here and tighten it up. The reason for this is if it was any longer, you can get a little bit of a post sticking up. So if you're wearing this on bare skin, that little bolt could be enough to really scratch your arm and whatnot while using it. So we can see with all those bolts in that it works really nice. This is a great time to tune your system to make sure there's no frictional causes. Noting that if you pinch here, you can't expect to see an increase in friction because what you're doing is actually bending the plastic here and impeding that bearing from sliding in that groove. But the friction should be quite low here. So do check that these bearings and blades move freely. Also check that your bearings sitting on top of the blades are all the way down so that they're not scraping these upper layers here, scraping along as they slide back and forth. Make sure that it stays very low friction. And we're gonna grab the um, arm brace. And essentially what you're gonna do is the part that has this bit of a C shape, this is the rear. So if I was to align this blade, like my arm is upside down and I put it over this, the rear is back here. And so I can flip this and align it like so. Another way to check is that if you look at these guys, you can see that the hole that is closest to a strap, that's the side of the blades. Now if you have some that don't go right through very readily, totally fine, because you're not gonna be able to get a nut on very easily otherwise, just drop the nut in the socket, hold it there while you tighten it up. Tighten them so it's firm, but not so firm that you're gonna be really squishing the plastic and causing frictional issues. You just want it tight. And again, with this system, you'll tighten them all to the tightness that you think is appropriate. Try running the mechanism and then tune it some more by loosening some or tightening them accordingly. So now we're gonna flip it over and add those three nuts to the back blades. Now all we have to do are the magnets. Now these should be installed and not very easy to pop out. So this is probably not something that you'll be doing in the build but just ensure that when you have two magnets that they're, the, that they're matching opposite polarities there and then basically just transpose it to the right. Don't flip it around, just keep it at the right so that the magnetic fields are aligned and they snap in place. Then you're gonna grab the smaller magnet and just let it snap into place. And you'll notice it's gonna act as a bit of a toggle because it's gonna snap from right to left, back and forth. And we want that to essentially, of course, hold the blades in or hold the blades out. Lastly, we're going to grab this little piece and we're going to just put it over there and we're going to bolt it. Now, if you notice a little bit of messiness around the post there, that's totally fine. Um, essentially, that's just from the angle that the printer had to print with. It's mostly covered up with the component there. And the reason I didn't change this up with other complexities is it's actually stronger as one piece. And with this particular layering, it's stronger. So in this component, I chose for it to be stronger rather than weaker. And we're just going to tighten in one of these short bolts here. And there we go, snaps in and snaps out. 
with this magnet trying to hold it in place. Now, one more note is you might see that the strap mount can be a little bit fudgy on some of these parts, like it's not super clear. You can always take a knife and clear any of those little strands that are there. Once again, this is one of those things where it'll be completely covered when you put a three quarter inch strap through here. You won't even see that. Also, this is the strongest print orientation for the shape that the strap design has, which is why I chose to print it in this way. And printing it in this way, just naturally you're gonna get a little bit of muddying in your print lines. But again, this is intentional. It's totally okay if your print has that. It's likely to have it. Your straps will cover it up, and that's the strongest way that I'm able to print this, which is why it is done that way. So there you go. There's your blade system. Now, if you wanted to use the straps, you could get some three-quarter inch elastic, or you could get elastic and buckles and all of that. Um, for the first two months of designing this, all I had was three-quarter inch elastic that I just had cut. I wrapped it and then just hot glued the ends together, just one layer of the other, hot glued it. And that worked actually great. Um, it held it on firmly. I would just stretch it out when I put my hand through. It'd be great for most cosplays. Super cheap, super easy, no sewing. But yeah, if you got one of these from my Etsy shop, I hope that you've enjoyed showing it off and uh, that it's serving you well and that this tutorial can help you keep this clean and ensure that it keeps running smoothly.